I am open and receptive to all good. Do that with me for a minute. I am open and receptive to all good. How does that feel? <laughs> does it really feel wonderful for everybody? <sighs> Too often, you know, we sit and I put, oh, people come to me and want to get prosperity and things like this, and I see them sitting like this. And I think, how are we going to let it in? How are we going to let it in? And this is such a wonderful symbolic gesture. I am open and receptive to all good. Not a little bit, not just some, but all good. You know, when you do something like this, the universe notices. The universe notices. OK, this is going to be a nice question and answer session. We're going to t I'll talk a little bit, and we'll do some questions and see where you are and see, see what your stuck points are in, in prosperity. Because a lot of think that people think that prosperity is just money. But really, there's many, many other things that come under the auspices of prosperity. There's time and love and success and joy and comfort and beauty and wisdom and good health and money. You know, you can be very poor in time. If you feel really rushed all the time and always pressured, you have poverty in your time. But if you feel that you have all the time in the world and that whatever you want to finish, you'll get done and it will, it will all happen, then you're really prosperous in time. And what about success? You know, if you feel that it's really way beyond your reach, then you're never going to get it. But if you feel that you can be successful, whatever that means to you, then that's wonderful. That's prosperity. Comfort. How many of you are prosperous in comfort? Or do you live lives that are really very uncomfortable and hard and tight? Wisdom. Do you have prosperity and wisdom? Do you feel that all the wisdom in the universe is available to you? Or do you think, oh, I'm just me and I don't know very much? And you know, I can't figure things out. If you feel that you're really connected with the universe and you really trust that part of you that's inside, then you can be absolutely prosperous in the abundance of wisdom. And what about love? Do you feel that you have an abundance of love? Or are you very poor in love? Is there very just a little bit of it in your life? How about joy? Do you feel you're really prosperous and have an abundance of joy? Or is that something you just allow yourself a little bit of now and then? And you really are very poor in joy. And then what about beauty? Do you see beauty everywhere? Do you allow yourself to experience an abundance of beauty? And what about good health? Do you have no health? Is there very little? Are you poor in good health? Or are you prosperous, and do you have an abundance of good health? And of course, there's money then. There's money too. You know, what do you let yourself have? Are you poor in money, or do you have an abundance of it? I like to use that uh, image a lot of the ocean, standing in front of the ocean with a container in your hand. You know, and you're there, and you have this container. But what is it? Is it a thimble with a hole in it? Is it a small, cracked cup? Is it a mug? Is it a vase? Is it a, a, a quart jar, or a pail, or a bucket, or a wash tub? Or do you have a pipeline? And remember, no matter how, a pipeline, run it right in. <laughs> but no matter how much you have, whatever your container it is, and no matter how much you're taking from the ocean of life, and even though we're all standing there, we're not robbing each other. And there's plenty for everyone. And no matter how much we take, there is no way we're going to run that ocean dry. It's absolutely impossible. And if you can th see yourself standing at the ocean of life in the same way, and remember, the container that you have is your consciousness. And you can always change your consciousness. And it doesn't matter if you came from poverty. It doesn't matter where you came from, and it doesn't even matter what your parents' beliefs were, or if they came from the Depression, or whatever. Because it's your consciousness, and what you're choosing to think and believe about prosperity, and your ability to deserve it, is what's going to create it for you. See, it has nothing to do with getting. People always think, oh, I want to get this, or I want to get this. It's really allowing yourself to accept. 
which is a different concept. When you're not having something that you want, it's because on some level you're not allowing yourself to accept it. But you see, life is here for us. It's here for us, and it's here to support us in every way. But remember, what we give out, we get back. So if we're stingy with life, then life will be stingy with us. It's just that simple. If we steal from life, life will steal from us. <coughs> and you know, it doesn't, it, department stores are not fair game. <laughs> if you take paper clips from the office or do your personal Xeroxing there, that's not fair game because it's still, it's the same old thing. What you give out, you get back. And what you're saying to the universe in a way is I can't afford to take those things, for, have those things for myself. I don't have the ability to earn it. Therefore, I must take it from somebody. And that's poverty thinking. That never, ever, ever creates prosperity. Life is here for us, and there is an incredible abundance on this planet. Sometimes we only see our lack, but the abundance that is here is so enormous. You know, if you think about it for a moment, there is so much food on this planet that we could literally feed everybody on this planet. Yes, it is true that there are people that are starving, but it's not because of a lack of food. I mean, we burn crops in this country just to keep prices up. If people are starving, it's a lack of love. It's that we're allowing such a thing to happen. There is an absolute abundance of money on this planet. There is so much money that we can't even count it. And yes, it is true that there are many people who have very little, but it has nothing to do with the amount of money that's here. It's a lack of consciousness. It's a not deserving, not accepting. And are you aware that there are billions and billions of people on this planet, and yet you will hear people tell you that they're lonely? It has nothing to do with the amount of people. It's because we put walls up and we won't allow the love to come in. We have an abundance of air on this planet. You know, if you think about it, our most precious substance is the air we breathe. When we exhale, we take it absolutely for granted that the next breath will be there. And if we didn't have a next breath, we wouldn't live for three minutes. We literally would not get out of this room alive. And yet we take it absolutely for granted that when we exhale, the next breath is going to be there. And we're all breathing in this room, and I'm not saying, don't breathe, there's not enough for me. We just assume. Now, if the most precious substance in our life has been given to us with such abundance, and that there's enough to last for as long as we shall live, then can we not trust that other things will be taken care of? And Matthew 6 is always a good thing to read when you're a little bit scared about stuff. The power that created us has put everything here for us, but it's up to us to deserve and to accept. That's what we need to do. You know, what we concentrate on increases. So you want to be very careful that you're not concentrating on debt and lack and bills and negativity, because that's what's going to increase it in our life. If you can concentrate on bills and see them as enemies, then they're going to be enemies, and you will never, ever have enough to really take care of them. Bills are wonderful things. They're, 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 what the, it means that somebody has trusted us enough to give us their service or their product, knowing that we have the ability to pay it. And if we can welcome those bills with love and rejoice, and when you write a check out to pay it or you pay a bill, absolutely rejoice that you're able to do it and know that what you're sending out is coming back to you. See, too often we think, oh, another bill. Or we write the check and say, oh, there isn't enough or whatever. But start feeling a good flow with this whole thing. Self-image is very important because self-image, feeling good about yourself is prosperity. Prosperity begins with that. Doesn't matter how much money you have, if you don't feel good about yourself, you're never going to enjoy it. And then look at your prosperity now. Because everything that you do have in your life is a reflection of what you believe you deserve, what you believe about yourself. 
You know, look at your home. Is this a place that you really love to live in? Is it comfortable and joyous? Or is it cramped and dirty and always messy? The same thing with your car. You know, is your car something that you really don't even like? Or is it something that reflects the love you have for yourself? And what about your clothes? You know, are they just a bother and a nuisance and something you have to wear? Or is it something you really rejoice in? Because again, it's a reflection of you. And what about your bank account? You know, how do you feel about that? And what is the state of it? Are you friends with money? Or is it an enemy? All these things are important because what we have in our life is a reflection of ourselves. <coughs> But remember, no matter where we are or whatever is happening, it's a reflection of ourselves, but it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. It's a thought about what you believe about yourself, what you believe about life, and what you believe you deserve. Now, let's take our little mirrors out for a moment. Our precious little mirrors that are so wonderful. <laughs> I, how many people here do uh, mirror work on a daily basis? Well, a few. How many people have never done mirror work? All right, well, you're in for an interesting experience. <laughs> the reason I like mirrors so much is that they really move you through stuck places because they reflect to you almost instantly what your beliefs are that are against you. OK, let's look into the mirror for a moment. <coughs> Look into your eyes and just say to yourself, my biggest fear about money is. My biggest fear about money is. <laughs> All right, just notice what comes up. What comes up? What is coming up when you do that? What sort of fears? Let's just share that for a moment. What sort of fears come up? What what? Yes, right here. Um, my biggest fear about money is that uh, it'll either be taken away uh -huh. when I get it, or that somehow I just, you know, that I won't be taken care of. And I do a lot of the mirror work, and I do a lot of the prosperity work. And um, who took you know, money away from you when you were little? Uh, well, it was a control issue with my family, with my parents. I come from a family with money, but it was oh. always. Uh huh. That's where the love came from, was with money. Uh -huh. And uh, I come from a, a father who has a tremendous fear of being broke. So it was passed on, and I know that. You know, okay. So I'm trying to work through that. Can, can you forgive him out. for that? It's a tough one. I, I'm trying to, but it's a hard one. Yes, but you see, your freedom with money is tied into it, not his. And he was doing the best he could coming from where he came from. And he probably was raised in a way that he was manipulated through guilt. So he manipulated you that way with money. So it's interesting that you came to this planet to learn stuff about money, and you had a lot of it. That's because a, big, a lot yeah. of people need to learn their money lessons, and they have nothing. Now, this is a big <laughs> lesson. I, mm -hmm. I, it's been put in front of me time and time again, so I'm real aware of it. It's mm -hmm. just when I start working through it, um, I get physical anxiety pains, I have panic attacks, I, all kinds of stuff. I mean, so I, I'm have you ever gone through a it. period in your life where you had no money? Um, no, no, I've never, uh, no, it has not happened to me because I've, uh, when I'm pushed up against it, you know, I work, I earn a good living, and it's always been provided. I mean, uh -huh. the evidence. So you can take care of yourself. Gone, yeah, and the evidence that it's go not going to be there. That's just my own fear, because it has always been provided. I've always been able to pay my bills and have nice clothes and All live right, in a nice so place. So your barrier, your issue, really is fear. Fear, And oh, not yeah. trusting. Yeah, lack who is of trust it, Who is it fear. you're not trusting? Are you not trusting your father, or you're not trusting yourself? I'm not trusting myself. And yet your track record is very good. Yeah, only over the past, you know, like year and a half is really when I was turned loose to take care of myself, and that's of course when I, I have a feeling. Up. I have a feeling that you could take five dollars and live a whole month very well. Uh, I have to question that. <laughs> no, I think you have enough resources that you're a very clever, very bright person, and you would work it out. You could probably start out with no money, but I'd say $5 just to get you started. Well. And then, and you could live a whole month without it. 
Remember, money is a means of exchange. It has no meaning in itself. We give it so much meaning. OK, so your fear is that you won't be taken care of, right. and it's going to be taken from you. Yes. And you see where it's coming from. All right, let's have a couple more. Yes, right here. All right. She said that what came up for her that is starving, that you would starve? Right. Okay. Have you ever? No. Did your mother, your father, did they come from a space of that? Did they grow up in the Depression? They did, but uh -huh. I don't think either of them ever, no. I mean, I would have heard of it. Okay. All right. It's an old thing. Maybe you had. Maybe it's something that you heard very young as a child from your parents, and you've picked it up. So that's wonderful, because you see, when you do something in the mirror like this, and a, a thought comes up, the good thing to do is to write it down. And if you're doing your affirmations in front of your mirror at home, always have a pad and a pencil with you and write down whatever that negative message is. And you don't even have to deal with it right then. But later on, you can sit down and maybe you'll have a list of them and say, wow, this is what I believe. No wonder I'm not having the prosperity that I want. You see, if we don't see what our negative messages are, there's, it's very hard to change them. And what most of us do is when we hear or feel a negative message, we try to run from it. And we have all sorts of ways of doing that. I mean, people go to uh, the extremes of drug and alcohol abuse and things like that. But there are lots of little ways that we run from our own barrier thoughts. And if we could, ex instead of that, accept them and examine them and turn them around, say, no, I don't want to believe that anymore. Remember, it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. That's all we're dealing with, no matter how difficult it is. Feelings are thoughts in motion in the body. That's what they are. They have no entity of themselves. So we, we have a thought, we get a feeling, and then we get frightened of the feeling, or we try to run from it. But if we realize it's just the thought moving through our body, and the thought can be changed. So if you look at those things and you say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to believe this. And yours, yours just came up, but it's probably an old one there. You know, and I don't want to feel that I'm going to lose money if I get it or something like that. I don't want to feel that I'm starving. I would rather choose to believe that I'm abundantly taken care of. I'm an extremely capable person. I can always create for myself. And I am always safe in the universe. You know, my, everything is supplied for me. See, we have to change these thoughts, and we must do them deliberately, because we're the people that are in charge. It's our minds. We think in our minds. Nobody else can do that. And we, have to, we get the opportunity now of choosing what we want to think. When we were very little, we had a lot of stuff fed into us by our parents and other places around us. I mean, after all, we got it from our relatives, we got it from neighbors, we got it from school, we got it from the church, we got it from television. All this stuff came in. And we're little, and we accept most of it. Very, very few small children really can say, no, that's nonsense, and I'm not going to believe that. Mostly children accept it and say, yes, yes, OK. But we're not little children now. We're adults, and we get to choose what we want to think. Only we have to look at what we are thinking at so we know what we need to change it to. Who else wants to share? Yes, right here. Um, I've, I've had a pretty good belief system in money, I think, most of the time. Great. And after reading your book, it really helped me a lot. And it was wonderful. I mean, it helped me so much. And I found unexpected sources of money coming in and just my spending habits changed, and I felt great about it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I shared those beliefs with some people that I know, and I also talked about feeling like deserving certain amounts of money. And w what happened was is they told me that that's not true, that, that what makes you feel like you deserve it, and that's not true, you have to earn it, and they know how hard I work at my job, which is not very hard. But on the other hand... <laughs> no wonder they're upset. <laughs> people get angry at people who don't work very much. <laughs> right, but I, but, I, but I do work in other yeah. areas yeah. outside of my job. You don't have to justify yourself. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks. That was my fear, was that maybe I don't work hard enough to deserve the amount of money that I have. Honey, if your consciousness is clear enough that you can bring in good money without struggling, I want you to love yourself. <laughs> you see, you do something like you pick up your little mirror and say, thank you for being so clever and bright. Thank you for getting it. 
Because what you really did is you got it. You do not have to struggle in order to make money. If you really work at things that you love, you can usually bring in good money. If you work at things you hate, or if you have a belief that you don't deserve, then you're going to, then you won't have it. But the people who are telling you you have to work hard, they work hard, yes? yes. And they don't make as much as you do. They don't seem to have as, right. Okay. It's well, you know, do you want to, see, you've put out your hand, and you've said, I'm willing to help you up. And they said, no, we're going to pull you down. Right. And right. which way do you want to go? See, I reach out my hand a lot to people. And if they take it and want to come up, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. Then I can teach and we can really go places. But if they're going to try to drag me down, you know, I say, bye. And I go, talk, and I go work with somebody who really wants to come up out of the mud. I see. Do you feel that uh, money is an exchange of energy? It's energy. It's an exchange of services. That's all it is. It has no meaning in itself. And, a, a, you know, a $10 bill is quite as spiritual as a rose. It's matter, it's form, it's energy, and it's what we give it. It's what we believe about it. We have so much stuff on money. I used to find it was much easier to teach a class on sexuality than it was on money, because when we get our money beliefs pushed, it's amazing how angry we get, because they're very tied into us. Even though we may say, I want to prosper, we will put up barriers and fights and all sorts of things. Right. So it's yes. okay to have money even without working hard at a job. Well, first, of, <laughs> first of all, you don't need my approval to live well. Right. And what I believe really doesn't matter for you. If you've got it going so it works, enjoy it in any part of your life. You know, if your life is filled with love, don't listen to some miserable, lonely person tell you how to run your life. If your life is working well with money, don't let somebody who does, whose life is not working with money tell you how to run it. And see, very often, remember, this happens with our parents, too. You know, so we'll have a parent who really had a miserable life. They come from a, a difficult place, and their own life is miserable. And then they will tell you how to run your life. <laughs> If you're going to listen to people, listen to the winners. Listen to people who know what they're doing. Listen to people who've proved what they're doing. All right. Yes, right here. It's coming, coming forward. When I looked in the mirror, the answer was, uh, there won't be enough. But I think I, that comes from my parents. There never was enough money. But when the, you were growing up, there wasn't enough right. to take care of everything. Right. Okay. There was, but there wasn't. But the real problem is my uncle has loads of money, and he treated people very badly. So how do I reconcile But what that? difference does it make? There are people that are poor that treat people badly. <laughs> it has nothing to do with money. Well, it does in my psyche, unfortunately. Now, now, the thing, you see, you said when you grew up there was never enough. Right. That doesn't mean there's not enough money. That only means that there wasn't enough money in your family. Right. But it has nothing to do with the abundance of money that's around. And your uncle, as I said before, prosperity to me begins with feeling good about yourself. Because when you really feel good about yourself, you're prosperous, even if you don't have much money. So the people who are nasty and mean are always people who haven't the faintest idea of how to love themselves. And what they're doing is expressing their own pain. Oh. All right, let's talk a little bit more. Yes, all right, right back here. We're coming back and forth, and then I'm... Okay. Hi. Hi. When I uh, looked in the mirror and said that, I thought, uh, kind of, I felt kind of insecure and sort of afraid because I, I did inherit some money. My father died last year, and I've been finding myself like trying to give it to people. Okay. And I mean, I gave my mother two thousand. I gave my sister a thousand. I like, you know, what asked. What you give yourself? I kept some money for myself, okay. and um, but it's just I think it's a fear. Like, I don't deserve it, and I, I'm not good well, enough to have, have this. Well, you may have some guilt about your father, too, mm -hmm. you know, and feeling that you're getting money from him when perhaps there were things you needed to clean up with him mm -hmm. and you didn't get a chance to. So it's like, I don't deserve it, and I better get rid of it. Yeah. But while you're going through those feelings, I would suggest that you put it in a bank account or a CD. But put it in That's a, what a I year did. CD I did, I did put and it make it sit CD. there for a year while you work through your stuff. All right. And then when you've worked through your stuff, you can go and get the money and enjoy it. But, 
If you have your hands on it right now, it sounds like every time a guilt feeling comes up, you may give some away. Yeah, it's and like then, whenever anyone, I seem to have people in my life coming in with money problems constantly. Of course, of course. And it's like the first thing of I want to do, I'll give you a hundred dollars, what do you need? You know, and it's like, I don't know of if course. I'm trying to, no, um, you see, they're, they're coming to you because you're feeling the guilt about the money. Okay. If it wasn't, they probably wouldn't even mention that they had money problems to you. <laughs> so they're helping you sort of go through your stuff. Okay. You, you need to begin to realize what you deserve. If you have any stuff with your father, do a meditation in your mind and forgive him or forgive yourself and have a talk to him so that you can <laughs> clean things up. Tell him you love him and get it cleaned up in your mind so that okay. that can be taken care of. Then you can then move from that step into deserving for yourself, that you deserve. And that remember, money problems or lack or having money is by right of consciousness. It's what we believe we deserve. And you can't, giving somebody money does not solve their problems, ever. Because then they don't, they just recreate. The best thing you can do for people who are having money problems is to teach them how to create it in consciousness because then that's lasting. That's much more lasting than handing some. But you can give, I mean, obviously we all give some money away at times, right. but don't give it away because you feel guilty. Okay. Because remember, people will say, you know, oh, well, I have to help people. But you're a people too. Right. You are somebody. Thank you're you. worth loving and you're worth prospering. You know, I like to think that we have a cosmic bank account, all of us. It's a, like a mental, a cosmic bank account. And we can put in deposits of affirmations, of positive thoughts, of believing we deserve. And we can eliminate the debts, the, the negative debts and negative thoughts and negative beliefs. We can take those out. And the more that you put in, wonderful experiences and wonderful thoughts into your cosmic bank account, the more you will bring, take out big dividends. Remember, your consciousness is the best bank account that you can have. What you do up here is far more important than what you do just in a bank account. Loving yourself pays enormous dividends, enormous <coughs> dividends. I know lots of people get upset because they say they're on a fixed income. But remember, who fixed it? <laughs> who fixed it? And it's a thing of co consciousness. It can be changed. We want to realize that where we are is the totality of possibilities. Not a little bit, but the totality of possibilities. And all things are possible. We want to know that our job is only one channel of an infinite source. There is an incredible infinite source that supplies everything, from the air we breathe to the vegetation to the plants and the animals and the planets and the stars and everything that's imaginable. And our jobs are like one channel. That's all it is. We can, ex we can enlarge this enormously. Anything that's fixed, any fixed income in our life has been fixed by us, by an acceptance or a belief. So we want to enlarge that and really let it go. Think for a moment about money and success and work and bills and debt and envy and lack and guilt. How do you feel about that? What are your beliefs about it? What do you think about your work? Do you think work is a drudge that you have to go through? Or do you see it as something that you really love to do and enjoy? What do you feel about debt? Is debt something that really drags you down? Or do you just see it as something that, that you can take care of easily and you don't allow it to pile up? What is your belief about lack? Is lack something that's always in your life? Or can you see that lack could be something that's part of the past and is not part of what's going on now? Again, what do you feel about bills? Bills are these things that people get such stuff on. But they're only pieces of paper and saying somebody trusted us enough. And what about envy? Are you jealous and envious of people who have? And what about guilt? Do you really feel that you don't deserve? 
See, these are all poverty-oriented thinking patterns. Any negative thought that you have about money is poverty-oriented. So listen to what you say and listen to what you're thinking. I love the exercise of having people clean out their closets. Go and clean out your closets and your refrigerators. Take all the stuff in the closets that you haven't worn in a period of time and either sell it or give it away or burn it. But get it out so that you have room for the new. You want to make room for new stuff to come in. So clean out your closets, let it go. And as you're doing it, you say this thing of, I'm cleaning out the closets of my mind. Same thing with refrigerators. You know, is that a place where there's lots and lots of little bits of food stuck in the corners? Let, get it all out. Clean it out. Make room. Because people who have very cluttered closets and very cluttered refrigerators have cluttered minds. They're not thinking clearly. It's just symbolic. That's all it is. It's symbolic of what, what we have in here. You know, you can do some wonderful affirmations in the morning when you get up, and again, I love this gesture because it, it's so symbolic and it says to the universe, I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, and just say, I'm open and receptive to receiving all good. This is a wonderful day of prosperity. One of the affirmations that I've used for a long time is that my income is constantly increasing. Just that simple, my income is constantly increasing. And then I watch it happen. What we believe for ourselves is going to come true. And when we're doing our affirmations again, if you do a positive affirmation and the negative comes up, just say, thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Don't, you want to hear it. We don't want to run from the negative affirmation. But what we want to do is acknowledge it, but not give it power. Not give it power. So whatever is coming up, so when you hear them, write them down again. Write them down and give yourself a chance to then turn them around into, parent, into positive affirmations. Yes. Yes, can we get the lady over in the corner there? No, it's a... My biggest fear about money is that um, I won't, um, is that I won't be able to make enough money in the career that I want I, I, I grew up in Beverly Hills, but I never had enough money like oh, yes, my friends uh -huh. did. Yes, yes. And so that was always that feeling like I never had enough. Yes, uh -huh. yes. And also, I've been sick since 1986. Well, that keeps you out of the running. Yes. And, that, and that keeps me out of having to deal with... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh-huh. I'd well, like, I'd it's, like it's one way to deal with it. See, a lot of people do that. They will go into ill health because then you can't expect people to do anything. and you, It just takes you out of the running completely, and somebody else has to take care of you. But it's a terrible price to pay. How would you like your life to be? Well, I, I, ha I would like... Um, I see myself moving more towards how I'd like it to be because I've been working on this kind of stuff for, for like three years. Um, I'm feeling like the love part is really abundant. I've got Great. a lot of love. So how, how else I would like it to be is where I am, I'm comfortable and feeling, and feeling free in the job that I do and the career that I want. I'd like to, to, I'd like to work at the career that I want to work at and make enough money to live and get over that issue already. Okay, then why don't you make that an affirmation? I am working at the career that I really enjoy, and I'm making an abundance of money, and I'm comfortable with it. Money has become my friend, and I have all that I need. Put it into a, an affirmation and Do say it. Every day, say it, and every time those th uh, negative thoughts come up, just say this over and over again. You've got to tip the scale. So you, so you believe that if I say that on a daily basis, those thoughts will really begin to change, and I believe it because if I've you're willing to let thoughts. go of them, if you're willing to let go of them. If you really want to hold on to them, then it won't work. And what do you do when you're not doing that affirmation? You see, remember every thought we think and every word we speak is an affirmation and going out and coming back. So if you do one affirmation three times a day, that's great. But what are you doing the rest of the time? That's what's important. I love myself. I'm willing to go beyond my past. 
I am the only person who chooses my thoughts now. You know, I work in a career that I really enjoy. I'm earning good money. I'm comfortable with it. I release the limitations of my parents. I let them go. You've got part of your life working nicely now, so, so you know, work on this now. You'll get it. Again, remember, we, our parents had lots and lots of beliefs about money, and we picked up a great deal of it. So what were your parents' beliefs? It's another good thing to sit down and write down, make a list. What did my parents believe about money? And write it all down, and then look at it and say, am I choosing to believe that now? I like to use the word choice and choosing in lots of the questions that I ask myself because I want to make sure that I understand that I am choosing to do what I'm doing. I don't have to do it. It's a choice. So do I choose to believe what they believe or would I like to believe something else? Again, we want to go beyond our parents' limitations. And I think many of us had parents that grew up in the Depression. And there, for them, there was a lot of fear. But we're not there now. We're not there now. If you want to change your job, first of all, if you say, I hate this job, it is not going to get you what you want. All you're going to do is take dissatisfaction with you into the next job. What I like to tell people to do if they want to change a job, first of all, is bless this current job with love. Put a lot of love into it. Thank it for being there when you wanted it, when it was there, when you first got it. And know that you're now passing it on to somebody else that will love it and will probably do an even better job than you're doing. Then open your, in that state, then open yourself to a wonderful new position. Know that there are people out there that are looking for exactly what you have to offer and that you're being brought together on the checkerboard of life. I love that image of, here you go, oh, hi, there you are. But you know, it's been happening like this for a while. And that you're working somewhere that, you, that uses your talents and abilities. You're being fulfilled. You're working with and for people that you love and that love you. And you're earning a good income. And it's in a beautiful location. <laughs> you know, put it all in. And, and, and with that sort of atmosphere, then you can attract something wonderful to you. It's the same thing with an apartment or a home. If you want to move from where you are, don't wander around saying, oh, I hate this apartment. Because you're not going to find something you really love. Or if you do find something nice, you're going to find this awful dissatisfaction in it right away because you're taking your consciousness. When you moved to your apartment, it was wonderful. So put love into it and say, thank you for being here for me. We really had a good time. And now it's time for me to move on. And I know somebody else wonderful is going to come and live here. And then I'm opening myself to a wonderful new place to live in the perfect location you know, with lots of light and sun of air. If that's important to you, it's very important to me. And put in everything that you want. And always add at a price I can easily afford at a price I can easily afford. Don't limit yourself and don't put something on there. Put it at a price I can easily afford. Then it's amazing what can come in that is exactly what you want. Same thing with a car. If you want to leave the car that you have, if you want a new one, put love into it. Thank it for being there for you. And say, I'm moving on now. I'm moving to a wonderful new car. And I know somebody else will love you. The more you can do that, the better it is. The better it is. Yes, right here. I've been very pro prosperous in my life. Good. And uh, I have a hard time opening up my arms and, and saying I'm willing to accept more prosperity because I have these fears that something terrible is going to happen. OK, was that a family thing? Family and life experiences. OK. So fear and safety have a lot of meaning. OK, so me. if you're like this, you're a lot safer. Yeah, I, Symbolically. I really became aware of it when you uh -huh. went to throw up in your arms. And I got really fearful, like, okay. All and right. I experienced okay. it. All right. I don't know what to do to. I have also a fear about, with an affirmation, do I throw myself, do I deny some part of myself? Or is there a, and will I, um, you know, everybody experiences denial and things like that. Will I use an affirmation to hide myself? I don't know. You might. 
I don't know whether you will or not. But an affirmation really is like planting a seed in the ground. And an affirmation, remember, it usually doesn't feel true to begin with. Because it, if it were a truth, you wouldn't need to do an affirmation. What you're trying to do is to create something that you didn't have before. And it, you're putting a seed in the ground, a new seed. And when you put the seed in the ground, you don't get instant whatever. What you get is a seed in the ground, and you have to nurture it. Now, to want something new in your life is not to deny what you have, unless you're releasing something. And then you, you don't have to deny it, but you can say, I'm letting it go because it no longer serves me. And now I want to create this new in my life and start the new affirmation going. And remember, if you have had experiences in your life that are not comfortable, on some level, they're mirrors of you. We don't always like to hear that, but everything in our life is a mirror of us. So if something's happening out there that's not comfortable, we have to look inside and say, how are we creating it? What is it about me, or what is it within me that believes that I deserve this experience? Because otherwise, we wouldn't bring it to us. So perhaps, I, I would say that perhaps a little more loving yourself would help. Because when you get that flowing, you won't bring in uncomfortable experiences. When I was a little girl, and then when I grew up and, and started out in the world, my self-esteem was so low, and I had such a terrible self-image that I created awful experiences, just terrible experiences. And that continued until gradually I learned how to use your mind, and that loving yourself is the way to bring good things into your life. And then my experiences changed. But you know, if you just say, oh, well, it's, all, it's scary, and, and if I open myself up, I'll get terrible things, you probably will, until you've changed whatever it is inside of you that attracts that. And that can, yes. OK, so, so it's just a question. You say you've, you've had a lot of money, so that's not an issue with you, but you have other areas. See, money isn't the answer. We think it is. We think money is going to take care of everything, and we won't have any problems anymore, but it's not our answer. Let's see what this gentleman right here wants to say. Hi, Louise. Yes. Um, my situation with finding a, a new house is a little different. I love the one I'm in, uh -huh. but I have to move. OK. So um, a year ago, I also had to move. I didn't love the place I was in, but I ended up loving it, and this new place manifested which now I love, and which mm -hmm. I have to leave. Okay. And I'm going out looking at all these places, and every one it's like, no, I don't want this, I don't want mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And like a whole month has gone by. Well, the right the place is, is waiting out. for you. The right place is looking for you. Now, you know that you can find a wonderful place. And just know and affirm that the power within you that got you the other place, or the other places, will bring the new one in. And you know it's the perfect place. And it's coming to you in a delightful, surprising manner. And yes, look for it. But sometimes it doesn't happen. I, I remember once in Los Angeles, I was looking for an apartment. It took me six months. And when I was looking, I couldn't believe the junk that I was seeing. I kept saying, this is Los Angeles. It's filled with wonderful apartments. Where are they? All I could see was junky apartments that I wouldn't consider. And it took me six months. And then when I found the one that I wanted, it was magnificent. And the thing was that the building was being built. And I couldn't get it because it wasn't built yet. And when it was built, it was waiting for me. And sometimes that happens. You know, you look for something, and you're not finding, and you're not finding, and you're not finding. There's a reason for that. Now, you know that you're going to get a wonderful place. Thank you for your support. You'll keep knowing that you always live in a wonderful place, that it's easy for you to find homes, and you, you always have a wonderful place to live. Make that your personal law. The other thing that I like, and I used this for years, was that I always have good relationships with my landlords. <laughs> because that's something that makes life a lot nicer. <laughs> yes. Let's do this gentleman over here. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm pretty well blessed with friends and joy, but like the other gentleman, I freelance, uh -huh. and so I get very well supported by the people around me, uh -huh. but that tends to make me feel very guilty because I can't reciprocate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 
That's your problem, not theirs. Are they giving to you only to uh, get back? Are it depends giving? on the individual. You know, family tends to give with one hand and expect something in return. Uh -huh. But the friends are giving out of the joy of giving. Okay, so, so the family who is giving with one hand and expecting in return, just give them some love. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying that. <laughs> just do it, you know, and if, they, if that's not good enough for them, that's not your problem. That's their problem. Okay. There are times in life when we, when the universe gives to us in a form, whatever form that we may need, and we may not be able to do anything, to give back or anything, and that's okay. I mean, however the universe has decided to take care of you, you say thank you. Yes. And then there will come a time in your life when you will help somebody else. I can think of many people in my life in the early days who really helped me enormously at a time when there was no way I could pay them back. But what's happened is that years later, I've taken an opportunity to help someone else. And that's the way life goes. Very often, all we do is exchange prosperity. Somebody gives you something, and you right away give it back. Or you reciprocate. Or somebody takes you to lunch, and you immediately have to take them to lunch. Or somebody gives you a gift, and you immediately have to give them a gift. Learn to receive, learn to accept, learn to say thank you and just receive. And you know, if the universe likes to know that you can receive and not just exchange. And sometimes you don't need to give back to the person that gave to you. You'll give to somebody else at another time. But learn to accept. A lot of us have problems with that. We can give, but we can't. You know, and, and when somebody gives you a gift, Say, smile and say thank you. That's all you need to do is smile and say thank you. You know, if somebody gave you a gift and you said, to them, oh, it's the wrong size or it's the wrong color, <laughs> I guarantee that person will never give you another gift. And the universe will say, this person doesn't want any good. You know, you accept graciously, and if it really isn't right for you, then you pass it on to somebody that can use it. Same thing with compliments. If somebody gives you a compliment, smile and say thank you. Just smile and say thank you. And you know, speaking of prosperity, how do you nourish yourself? What do you do for yourself that's nourishing? What do you do to make yourself feel good, to take care of yourself, to make sure that you're in superb health? to make sure that you have lots of loving friends around you. What do you do? Do you take time to nourish yourself? Again, you know, going to the mirror in the morning, any time of the day, but I like the morning because it sets the tone of the day. And saying, what can I do for you today to nourish you? How can I nourish you? How can I make you happy? How can I make you happy? The other thing we want to do, you know, is we want to be grateful for what we do have. If, we, if we're only looking at what we don't have, if we're only seeing the lack, again, that's not a way to bring more good in. Start to be very aware of what you have and be very grateful for it so that more stuff can come in. This lady over here wants to ask me something. I saw you. Hi. I'm having a hard time receiving happiness. Um, actually, I'm very happy. I'm having a hard time with fear with of fear. being happy. Okay, what it's, would happen? I'm if newly you're happy? married uh -huh. and I'm very happy and I feel like I'm receiving love more than I ever have. I have a nine month old baby who's uh -huh. very beautiful and I love her very much. Mm -hmm. And I have a tremendous amount of fear that something's gonna happen to her or something's gonna happen well, if I'm too happy. Yes. Well, you know what that's called? That's called running anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Uh, it's like there's a part of, there's an anxiety part of us that is here. And usually it gets taken care of this way or that way. We have these little things going on. When our life is really magnificent, it's like there's, we're not handling that part of ourselves. Yeah. So these thoughts come up. So when you hear them or when you feel them, just say, it's okay, I'm just running anxiety. All is well. My life is so wonderful and I deserve and I'm willing to accept and I can have. It's, it, that's all you're doing. Just, just recognize it is that little part of you is saying, well, you know, she's not upset anymore, and we've got to do something. 
Sometimes Something's going to go wrong. I just know it. Things are too good. <laughs> thank you for sharing, you know, again, thank you for sharing. You know, I appreciate, I know you're trying to take care of me. You know, one of the things that I do when a fear thought comes up is I say to it, I thank it. I say, thank you for trying to protect me. Thank you for taking care of me. I appreciate that you want to help me. And then I'll do an affirmation for whatever it is. But I acknowledge that the fear thought is there to protect me because that's what fear is really, isn't it? You know, you get frightened and the adrenal comes and it's saying, where's the danger? So I, I say, thank you. And you can do the same thing for that. And just don't give it a lot of importance. Okay, let's give it to the lady in Aqua here. Yes. Hi. I've read a lot of your books and I'm really trying to practice learning and applying what I'm getting out of the books. But I, when I looked into the mirror, I expected to have the fear of not having enough money. Uh huh. But what came to me was a fear of having the money. Uh -huh. And I sat here and thought about that. My family did keep playing these old tapes. We were po poverty mm -hmm. and welfare children. And it was always, okay. well, rich people are no good or they're selfish or they're whatever. And oh, on so and on now on. if you have money, you're going to be no good. Oh, yeah, and you should never have a credit card. And what's really funny is I have a credit card and I, I always sabotage myself with my credit cards. I always manage to have enough money to pay the rent and buy my food. And if I start making too much money or becoming too successful, I will sabotage myself so that I only provide enough money to meet my needs and not my wants. Mm -hmm. Well, then I started putting out these affirmations of it's okay to accept and to have things. And yesterday, I was driving down the street, and I really had a strong need for a vacuum cleaner and a typewriter. <laughs> and those are like so unrelated. But I turned up the wrong street, and sitting on the corner was a vacuum cleaner that had a sign on it that said, free, it runs, take me. <laughs> I stopped the car. And I got out of the car, and sitting next to the vacuum cleaner on the ground was a typewriter. There was a little Jewish man that was standing in the driveway, and I said, excuse me, are these yours? And he said, no, dear, they're yours. I have had them for so long, I don't use them. The maid has her own vacuum cleaner. You take them and use them well. And I smiled and said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you must have made some changes in consciousness, I think. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's let this lady. I hear you talking about loving yourself and allowing, being willing to learn to love myself. But how do I put it into practice? How do I really allow myself to love myself well, so that I can Well, very first, first thing that you do, absolute number one on the list, is you stop criticizing yourself. Just make a vow that you are not going to do that at all anymore. And work on that as much as you can, because as you stop criticizing yourself, you are going to be amazed at how you lighten up on yourself. I find that that's the number one thing that's in the way of loving who we are. I really, uh, I really appreciate what you said about if we couldn't say I love you, to say I'm willing to I'm learn willing to love to. you. That was very well, helpful. Bring it I back appreciate to, that. to a, a space that you can begin to work. Right. You know, don't, you. don't force yourself. If, the quicker you can get to I love myself, the better it is. But if you can't do it to start with I'm willing to learn, or I'm willing to begin to learn to like you, you know, if you have to move that <laughs> far back. But someplace so that you can start inching up till you get to the point where you say, I love you. <laughs> You're wonderful. You know, and really feel good about it. And that takes time for some people because we've got all this stuff in the way. And when we get to the point where we can really do that, it's amazing the wonderful stuff that happens in our lives. But remember, we're only dealing with thoughts, and thoughts can be changed. I love working in a group like this because we help each other. You know, we bring up stuff, and we can see where other people are, and it touches stuff inside of us. When we change our thinking, we change our reality. That's just that simple. So let's know some positive things for ourselves. 
We are open and receptive to wonderful new ideas. We allow prosperity to enter our lives on a level that it has never entered before. We deserve the best, and we are willing to accept. Our income is constantly increasing. We move away from poverty thinking into prosperity thinking. We love ourselves. We rejoice in who we are, and we know that life is here for us and will supply us with everything that we need. We move from success to success, from joy to joy, and from abundance to abundance. We are one with the power that created us, and we express for ourselves the greatness that we are. We are divine, magnificent expressions of life, and we are open and receptive to all good. And so it is. Thank you very much. I am open and receptive to all good. Do that with me for a minute. I am open and receptive to all good. How does that feel? <laughs> does it really feel wonderful for everybody? <sighs> Too often, you know, we sit and I put, oh, people come to me and want to get prosperity and things like this, and I see them sitting like this. And I think, how are we going to let it in? How are we going to let it in? And this is such a wonderful symbolic gesture. I am open and receptive to all good. Not a little bit, not just some, but all good. You know, when you do something like this, the universe notices. The universe notices. OK, this is going to be a nice question and answer session. We're going to t I'll talk a little bit, and we'll do some questions and see where you are, and see, see what your stuck points are in, in prosperity. Because a lot of think that people think that prosperity is just money. But really, there's many, many other things that come under the auspices of prosperity. There's time and love and success 
and joy and comfort and beauty and wisdom and good health and money. You know, you can be very poor in time. If you feel really rushed all the time and always pressured, you have poverty in your time. But if you feel that you have all the time in the world and that whatever you want to finish, you'll get done and it will, it will all happen, then you're really prosperous in time. And what about success? You know, if you feel that it's really way beyond your reach, then you're never going to get it. But if you feel that you can be successful, whatever that means to you, then that's wonderful. That's prosperity. Comfort. How many of you are prosperous in comfort? Or do you live lives that are really very uncomfortable and hard and tight? Wisdom. Do you have prosperity and wisdom? Do you feel that all the wisdom in the universe is available to you? Or do you think, oh, I'm just me and I don't know very much and, you know, I can't figure things out? If you feel that you're really connected with the universe and you really trust that part of you that's inside, then you can be absolutely prosperous in the abundance of wisdom. And what about love? Do you feel that you have an abundance of love? Or are you very poor in love? Is there very just a little bit of it in your life? How about joy? Do you feel you're really prosperous and have an abundance of joy? Or is that something you just allow yourself a little bit of now and then? And you really are very poor in joy. And then what about beauty? Do you see beauty everywhere? Do you allow yourself to experience an abundance of beauty? And what about good health? Do you have no health? Is there very little? Are you poor in good health? Or are you prosperous and do you have an abundance of good health? And of course, there's money then. There's money too. You know, what do you let yourself have? Are you poor in money or do you have an abundance of it? I like to use that uh, image a lot of the ocean, standing in front of the ocean with a container in your hand. You know, and you're there and you have this container, but what is it? Is it a thimble with a hole in it? Is it a small cracked cup? Is it a mug? Is it a vase? Is it a, a, a quart jar or a pail or a bucket or a wash tub? Or do you have a pipeline? And remember, no matter how, a pipeline, run it right in. <laughs> but no matter how much you have, whatever your container it is, and no matter how much you're taking from the ocean of life, and even though we're all standing there, we're not robbing each other, and there's plenty for everyone, and no matter how much we take, there is no way we're going to run that ocean dry. It's absolutely impossible. And if you can th see yourself standing at the ocean of life in the same way. And remember, the container that you have is your consciousness. And you can always change your consciousness. And it doesn't matter if you came from poverty. It doesn't matter where you came from. And it doesn't even matter what your parents' beliefs were or if they came from the depression or whatever. Because it's your consciousness and what you're choosing to think and believe about prosperity and your ability to deserve it is what's going to create it for you. See, it has nothing to do with getting. People always think, oh, I want to get this or I want to get this. It's really allowing yourself to accept, which is a different concept. When you're not having something that you want, it's because on some level, you're not allowing yourself to accept it. But you see, life is here for us. It's here for us, and it's here to support us in every way. But remember, what we give out, we get back. So if we're stingy with life, then life will be stingy with us. It's just that simple. If we steal from life, life will steal from us. <coughs> and you know, it doesn't, it, department stores are not fair game. <laughs> if you take paper clips from the office or do your personal Xeroxing there, that's not fair game because it's still, it's the same old thing. What you give out, you get back. And what you're saying to the universe in a way is, I can't afford to take those things, for, have those things for myself. I don't have the ability to earn it. Therefore, I must take it from somebody. And that's poverty thinking. That never, ever, ever creates prosperity. 
Life is here for us, and there is an incredible abundance on this planet. Sometimes we only see our lack, but the abundance that is here is so enormous. You know, if you think about it for a moment, there is so much food on this planet that we could literally feed everybody on this planet. Yes, it is true that there are people that are starving, but it's not because of a lack of food. I mean, we burn crops in this country just to keep prices up. If people are starving, it's a lack of love. It's that we're allowing such a thing to happen. There is an absolute abundance of money on this planet. There is so much money that we can't even count it. And yes, it is true that there are many people who have very little, but it has nothing to do with the amount of money that's here. It's a lack of consciousness. It's a not deserving, not accepting. And are you aware that there are billions and billions of people on this planet? And yet you will hear people tell you that they're lonely. It has nothing to do with the amount of people. It's because we put walls up and we won't allow the love to come in. We have an abundance of air on this planet. You know, if you think about it, our most precious substance is the air we breathe. When we exhale, we take it absolutely for granted that the next breath will be there. And if we didn't have a next breath, we wouldn't live for three minutes. We literally would not get out of this room alive. And yet we take it absolutely for granted that when we exhale, the next breath is going to be there. And we're all breathing in this room. And I'm not saying, don't breathe. There's not enough for me. We just assume. Now, if the most precious substance in our life has been given to us with such abundance, and that there's enough to last for as long as we shall live, then can we not trust that other things will be taken care of? And Matthew 6 is always a good thing to read when you're a little bit scared about stuff. The power that created us has put everything here for us, but it's up to us to deserve and to accept. That's what we need to do. You know, what we concentrate on increases. So you want to be very careful that you're not concentrating on debt and lack and bills and negativity, because that's what's going to increase it in our life. If you can concentrate on bills and see them as enemies, then they're going to be enemies, and you will never, ever have enough to really take care of them. Bills are wonderful things. They're, they're, they're what the, it means that somebody has trusted us enough to give us their service or their product, knowing that we have the ability to pay it. And if we can welcome those bills with love and rejoice, and when you write a check out to pay it or you pay a bill, absolutely rejoice that you're able to do it and know that what you're sending out is coming back to you. See, too often we think, oh, another bill. Or we write the check and say, oh, there isn't enough or whatever. But start feeling a good flow with this whole thing. Self-image is very important because self-image, feeling good about yourself is prosperity. Prosperity begins with that. Doesn't matter how much money you have, if you don't feel good about yourself, you're never going to enjoy it. And then look at your prosperity now. Because everything that you do have in your life is a reflection of what you believe you deserve, what you believe about yourself. You know, look at your home. Is this a place that you really love to live in? Is it comfortable and joyous? Or is it cramped and dirty and always messy? The same thing with your car. You know, is your car something that you really don't even like? Or is it something that reflects the love you have for yourself? And what about your clothes? You know, are they just a bother and a nuisance and something you have to wear? Or is it something you really rejoice in? Because again, it's a reflection of you. And what about your bank account? You know, how do you feel about that? And what is the state of it? Are you friends with money or is it an enemy? All these things are important because what we have in our life is a reflection of ourselves. <coughs> But remember, no matter where we are or whatever is happening, it's a reflection of ourselves, but it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. It's a thought about what you believe about yourself, what you believe about life, and what you believe you deserve. Now, let's take our little mirrors out for a moment. 
our precious little mirrors that are so wonderful. <laughs> I, how many people here do uh, mirror work on a daily basis? Well, a few. How many people have never done mirror work? All right, well, you're in for an interesting experience. <laughs> The reason I like mirrors so much is that they really move you through stuck places because they reflect to you almost instantly what your beliefs are that are against you. Okay, let's look into the mirror for a moment. Look into your eyes and just say to yourself, my biggest fear about money is... Just notice what comes up. What comes up? What is coming up when you do that? What sort of fears? Let's just share that for a moment. What sort of fears come up? What are what? Yes, right here. Um, my biggest fear about money is that uh, it'll either be taken away uh -huh. when I get it, or that somehow I just, you know, that I won't be taken care of. And I do a lot of the mirror work, and I do a lot of the prosperity uh -huh. work. And um, who took money know. away from you when you were little? Uh, well, it was a control issue with my family, with my parents. I come from a family with money, but it was oh. always uh -huh. that's where the love came from was with money. Uh -huh. And uh, I come from a, a father who has a tremendous fear of being broke, so it was passed on, and I know that. You know, so okay. I'm trying to work through that. Can, can you forgive him out. for that? It's a tough one. I, I'm trying to, but it's a hard one. Yes, but you see, your freedom with money is tied into it, not his. And he was doing the best he could coming from where he came from. And he probably was raised in a way that he was manipulated through guilt. So he manipulated you that way with money. So it's interesting that you came to this planet to learn stuff about money, and you had a lot of it. That's because a, big, a lot yeah. of people need to learn their money lessons and they have nothing. Now, this is a